Hi everyone, this is Heidi with Heidi and Franny's Garage. Today we're going to show you how to double your garage space with a four post lift. Hi everyone, it's Franny and today I want to take you on a tour of the lifts in our garage. They're manufactured by a company called Direct Lift and the model number is Pro Park 8. So these are 8,000 pound lifts. Uh, they're 110 volts and we use them mainly for storing the cars, but they're also really, really good for maintenance as well. Over the years, I've developed a few neat tips and tricks that I wanna share with you today if you're going to get one of these lifts to really make them super duper useful. I'm gonna run you through the operations of the lift and show you just kind of the features of the lift and it's, this is just gonna be a little bit of a romp, but it'll be fun. So let's get started. So operation of the lift is actually pretty simple. This lowers the lift by bleeding off the pressure and this little green button up here is the electric start for the motor. So we just push that and that's all we have to do. And as you can see, now the lift is starting to rise down here. It pulls this ram here back. The cables are all running through pulleys here and end up at the top. So it literally pulls on the cables and lifts itself up. This lift also has a lock on it here. So it has a mechanical set of locks. So as the lift rises, the lock is spring-loaded. There it goes. It will jump into one of the big square holes here on the lock plate. And that's how we mechanically lock the lift. So when you get it to the desired height that you want it to be, you want to go just a little bit above and then drop it back down so it seats just like that into the locks. Now it's mechanically locked. So in order to lower the lift, once we've got it set on the locks, we have to release it off the locks first. And the problem is you can't really release this thing until you raise it up a little bit. So you have to go ahead and raise it up just a little bit first. And I usually keep a little pressure until the lock release will go down. Once the lock release is down and you can easily move it, all you have to do is hit the hydraulic release in the bottom and down it goes. So these are the ramps that come with the lift. And each one of them weighs oh, probably about 20 pounds at least or more. They're just they're solid steel. They're very strong, but they're a massive pain in the buns to work with. And they're really supposed to go in these slots here. So carefully move them around a little bit. There we go. In the slot like that. I'm going to put them on their nose. Well, their claim to fame is that one, they're exactly the right height. And two, this lip that goes in here gets caught on this big brace here and you can actually raise the lift with the ramps on. They'll sort of hang down a little bit. So these are great ramps but for our purposes they're too heavy and they stick out too far and we can't leave them on the lift so they're just too hard to maneuver around. So this is Franny top tip. Get yourself a set of these. These are race ramps and they weigh almost nothing. They're really designed for you to take to the track. So, oh, there we go. So they can handle up to 1,500 pounds each and they're very durable. They're made out of, uh, what feels like a styrofoamy kind of thing, really. Feels funny, but it is. The only thing is they are a little bit low. Not the end of the world though. The car can easily climb up over the lip and it does protect the, uh, the lock rod here. So these things are wonderful. And then when you've, when you've got the car up, you turn around and you slide them under the tires and it helps hold the car in. So top tip number two is to raise your garage doors. So we initially didn't raise our garage doors and it was a little bit difficult to get the cars in and get them placed on the lift so that the garage doors didn't hit them. 
but it's much easier if you can just raise the garage doors. With your garage doors all the way at the top, you're gonna to need a new garage door opener. And we use these LiftMaster jack pole lifts. The reason they're called jack pole lifts is because they actually attach to the pole, the jack pole that has the springs on it, you can see here. When the lift turns, it literally turns the jack pole, which is great, which means that they can be mounted on the wall here. So when we got our third lift, we had a small problem. There's not enough clearance between the side of the lift and the wall here. And I was thinking, well, I'll just have to put the power unit on the wall. But turns out that direct lift actually makes a really cool bracket to mount this on the front of the lift. That's gonna be our top tip number three for getting the most out of your lift. So when you buy your lift, it comes with a few accessories. It comes with a couple of drip trays here. So these are plastic drip trays. They're stronger than they look, uh, but they're wonderful. You can put them underneath your car and not worry about drips hitting the car below it. They also provide this incredibly strong steel tray. So this is a jack tray. So you can actually put um, like a bottle jack in the center of this thing or anything you want really, or put jack stands on it and it's extremely strong and heavy too. So very heavy duty, can easily handle the weight of the car. The other last accessory that they, that they provide that I really, really like are these little stops up here. They've got little rubber feet on the bottom of them here and they stay put really well on top of the lifts and they definitely let you know if you're going to go a little too far off the end of the lift. They're wonderful. One of the things you'll notice when you put in a lift is that it blocks all the light from the ceiling, making it very dark underneath. So my fourth tip today that I wanna give you is to add lights underneath the lift. We added a set of strip lights, LED strip lights, up and down the rails. So here, check this out. Isn't that cool? It adds a huge amount of light. We have a whole video on how we installed these lights, so I'll link that at the end of this video so you can check that out. But these things have been wonderful and they really do light up the car underneath it beautifully. They're nice and thin, they don't get crushed when you lower the lift, uh, and they're LEDs so they don't put out any real heat either. One of the accessories that they include with the lift is a set of casters. So to install the casters, we have to remove this big pin. Hold on a little clip. And the caster slides in here and the pin goes through this tube that's welded onto the lift. And we replace our little clip. And that's it. We're all set. So the way this actually works is as you lower the lift and the cross member for the lift comes down, it will seat right here in this V. And just like a teeter-totter, as it continues on down, it's going to lift this side up. So it'll lift the pad up about an inch or so up off the ground. With all four of the casters in, you can get the all four of the pads up off the ground. And then it's just a simple thing to wheel these things around. These are very strong casters and they wheel around just fine. And that's how you move your lift around in your garage. Well, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed a little tour of the lifts in the garage and maybe found some of the tips and tricks a little useful. If you know somebody who might be interested in the video, please consider sending it off to them. That would be great. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe button and you will be notified the next time we send out a video, which is usually on the weekends. Till next time, safe travels. Bye. Okay, Cleopatra.